Hello, everyone, and welcome to our show, where you will hear about everyday miracles happening in people's lives. God is real and sends His angels to help us, especially when we pray to them. Today, I have one story, so let's begin. I wanted to share a very strange but divine encounter my husband and I had while driving to my mother-in-law's house. As we found out later, we were not the first to have such a heavenly visitation happen on this stretch of road. As we started our journey to New York State, John and I were already deep into our daily arguing. Somewhere among all the petty, heated disagreements, we started taking each other for granted and we lost our love for each other. As we drove along, I told him to put on a seatbelt and he snapped back, just stop worrying. You're not listening to me, I said and added. You know, whenever I visit your mother, I feel like she puts me under her microscope. That's your illusion. My mother isn't that critical, he said. Really? Then why do you always feel like you have to please her? He said, you're not in a competition with her, Jackie. Settle down. I make plenty of time for you. Oh, just like you make time for your boss, your friends, your golf buddies? You always make me feel like I'm last in line, I told him. Come on. When I'm working late, it's for us. When I'm golfing with a client, it's for us. Our rants were suddenly halted by a loud pop. We got a flat on one of the front tires. Struggling to control the car, we finally pulled over safely to the side of the road. John got out and started trying to change the tire. Meanwhile, I got out and walked around to the back of the car and tried to call for road service because John wasn't mechanically inclined and didn't even know how to change the tire. Unfortunately, there was no phone signal. John was trying but couldn't even loosen the nuts holding the tire on. After a while, out of frustration, I asked, Are you sure you're doing that right? He said, Of course I am. Just leave me alone. As I was standing there moping around, I glanced out of the corner of my eye, and standing right next to me, not two feet away, was a man. I immediately became startled and yelled out, John, who quickly stood up and saw the man who seemed to appear out of nowhere standing next to me. He had short brown hair, a medium build, and looked like a monk with his reddish-brown tunic and shoulder bag. Calmly looking at John, he said, Looks like you need help. John said, Uh, yeah, the guy said the tire store put these tires on too tight. The man said, Let me try, and walked over to where John was standing next to the flat tire still attached to the car. John motioned with his hand and said, Knock yourself out. So, the man took off his shoulder bag, crouched down with a tire iron, and started working on the nuts as John walked over to me and asked, Where did he come from? Still shocked and a little frightened, I said, I don't know. Is this a good idea? John glanced over to the man and said, We'll give him a few bucks for helping. Then, he noticed the man was able to loosen the nuts that were holding the tire on with ease. John had a look of amazement on his face. As the man continued unscrewing the nuts, he said, Sometimes the direction we choose is not the right one. Then he looked up at us with a smile of kindness. He got the tire off, and John helped him put the spare on. We were ready in a matter of minutes to continue our trip. John mentioned that his mother was not going to be happy that we're late. As the man was finishing putting on the hubcap, he looked up at us and said, Sometimes when we try to please many others, we lose sight of those who are most important to us, the ones we truly love. It's easy to take them for granted, even when they're always here for us. John thought about that for a bit and said, Thank you. We really appreciate this. Can we give you a lift somewhere? The man stood up with a smile and shook his hand, and then we all got into the car with the man sitting in the back seat. As we drove off, I looked back and told the man, I feel better if you put your seatbelt on. He smiled and put his seatbelt on. As I looked at John, quietly he decided to put his on too. John asked, how far are you going? He said, I'll know when the time comes to leave you. I thought that was a little odd and asked, so you just travel from place to place? Your family must miss you. John said, you know, I envy you, doing whatever you want, not having anyone to answer to, complete freedom. Life's just one big adventure. Looking at John, he said, that it is. But when you see how much can be gained when two join together as one, to have someone who knows your private, most personal pain and can replace it with joy, that is an adventure. John thought for a second and said, 
Well, everything takes work. The man said, life is work. Any heavy load can be made lighter when two work together, as opposed to pulling in opposite directions. When love is held in an open hand, it can flourish instead of being crushed. As he said those words, something in me changed. I suddenly felt my heart fill with love and was at peace. Everything was calm. John looked at me and we both smiled at each other. I could see something in him had changed too. I saw love in his eyes again. It's like you knew us, I said as I turned my head and looked back at the man. But shockingly, he was gone. I shouted, John, oh my God, he's gone. We slammed on the brakes and quickly pulled over. As we looked in the back seat, his seatbelt was still fastened, but he had vanished. He must have fallen out, I blurted. John said, while wearing his seatbelt? After searching the area where we thought he had left our car and not finding him, we felt like we needed to report what happened. So when John spotted a police officer, we pulled over. I told him he was just there and then he was gone. The police officer told us, I've been up and down this stretch of highway so many times, I know every crack of the pavement. I could look for that drifter, but I won't find him. You're the fourth traveler that's seen him this month. Almost in a daze, both of us thanked the police officer, got in the car and drove off. When we arrived at John's mother's house, things were different. Mother sensed something had happened, something that brought us closer together. It was as if our wedding vows had been respoken and we owed it all to that monk or angel that filled us with God's love. From that day forward, we have never taken one another for granted. Sure, we may have our disagreements, but all differences can be worked out when we treat each other with respect. Mutual respect is one of the most important virtues that holds a marriage together because we are all children of God. When I respect my husband, I am actually respecting the God that dwells in his heart. Our amazing experience reminds me of a passage from the Bible. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Thank you for listening. Miracles can and do happen every day. How about you? If you have a special story you would like to share on this channel, please send it to us for a possible future show.